Hello everyone, welcome to Rao's Academy for Competitive Examination. I am Rajwardhan and today we are going to start another technology and that is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is considered as 21st century technology and that's why UPSC's focus has also been on nanotechnology. UPSC has asked some questions from nanotechnology chapter as well. Right. So, in this chapter we are going to discuss about various topics. So, which are those topics that we are going to refer to? So, under nanotechnology we will be discussing about, we will discuss firstly about some introductory points. So, nanotechnology introduction we will have, nanotechnology introduction. Then we will discuss about uh, some important aspects of nanoscience wherein our focus would be on the properties that get changed at nanoscale, right. So, nanoscience we will discuss, then we will discuss about uh, the nanostructures. There are some important structures that are exhibited by nanoparticles, those nanostructures we will discuss and then we will discuss about the applications of nanotechnology in various sectors. Applications of nanotechnology. Nanotechnology has important applications in medical sector, in agriculture sector, energy production and also in electronics. So, those applications also we will be discussing and finally, we will discuss about what are the threats that are associated with the use of nanotechnology. So, these are the topics that we are going to discuss. Relatively, it is a small chapter. So, let us start firstly with the introduction of nanotechnology. But before that, you can check the MPPSC prelims 2025 test series. You can scan this QR code in order to get more information. Also, you can uh, check this schedule of MPPSC prelims test series 2025. Then these are some other initiatives of Rouse uh, Academy for Competitive Examination. Then uh, you can even check the uh, app of Rouse Academy for Competitive Examination. You can scan this QR code in order to install app from Play Store, Google Play Store. Right. So, let us start with our discussion. So, firstly, some background of this particular technology. some background of this technology. In 19, in 1959, Richard Finman, the famous physicist gave one lecture. Richard Finman gave one very famous lecture and that lecture is titled as, there is plenty of room, there is plenty of room at the bottom. There is plenty of room at the bottom. So, this is one lecture was given by Richard Finman in 1959 at California Institute of Technology and in this particular lecture, he hinted at, he did not use the term nanotechnology, he just hinted at the nanotechnology, the existence of nanoparticles which can be used for various applications. And that was considered as the origin of nanotechnology. After this, after 1959, in 1974, Norio Taniguchi, Norio Taniguchi used nanotechnology term. Nanotechnology term was used in 19. 74 by Norio Taniguchi and that's why, that's why this technology is considered as a recent origin technology and hence there are number of innovations, there, there are number of inventions that are being carried out in this technology and that's why most of the applications that we are going to discuss in nanotechnology are, most of those applications are futuristic applications. Only few applications of nanotechnology are being used already but otherwise other applications are futuristic applications, fine. So, that is what is the background of this particular technology. Now, what exactly is the size of nanoparticles? So, when we talk about nanotechnology, we are dealing with, 
we are dealing with nanoparticles we deal with nanoparticles whose size is 10 to the power minus 9 meters right whose size is 10 to the power minus 9 meters and this is equal to this is equal to 1 nanometers nanoparticles of the size 10 to the power minus 9 meter is what we deal with under nanotechnology right now how small this this size is it is very small for example suppose suppose we take a marble we take one marble right marble means the marbles that you must have played in your in your childhood right so this is one marble and if we compare if we consider that the size of this marble is 1 nanometer then the size of earth let's say this is earth then the size of earth can be considered as 1 meter if we consider that the size of marble is 1 nanometer then the size of entire earth would be of 1 meter only so we are dealing with that small particles right in front of earth whose size is 1 meter whose size we are considering as 1 meter in front of that earth marble that you must have played with in, in childhood its size is can be considered as 1 nanometer so that is what size of nanoparticles that we are dealing with and this scale this scale is called as nano scale the scale is called as nano scale right so that is what are the particles with which we are dealing with but why why we are giving so much importance to these uh, very small particles because at this particular scale at this nano scale nanoparticles exhibit different properties than their normal sized counterparts at nano scale particles exhibit nanoparticles exhibit nanoparticles exhibit nanoparticles exhibit different properties than their normal size counterpart and that's why we are giving so much of importance to nanoparticles so what are the different properties let me give you an example and then we will try to understand why properties are changing so firstly let us let us take examples of these changes in properties in nanoparticles for example for example uh, gold gold normal sized gold normal sized gold has which color normal sized gold has golden or yellowish color yellowish color but if we take nano particles of gold nanoparticles of gold then the nanoparticles of gold are of which color they are of purple color purple to pinkish color they have right so this is the change in property right so what is which property is changing here here there is change in optical property because color of the objects that we have around us is the optical property of those objects so optical property is changing here right second example zinc oxide zinc oxide zinc oxide its normal particles normal particles of zinc oxide have which color white color they have white color normal particles of zinc oxide are white in color and the nanoparticles of zinc oxide nanoparticles of zinc oxide are of transparent color they are transparent not colored they are transparent they are transparent so here also there is change in the optical property right for example where do we use these this zinc oxide Zinc oxide is used in sunscreen. 
it is used in sunscreen now when we use uh, normal size pa particles of zinc oxide in sunscreen the sunscreen sunscreen appears white you must have seen cricket players they apply some white uh, white kind of cream on their face that is nothing but a sunscreen where zinc oxide is used and that zinc oxide is white in color fine so that is uh, normal size zinc oxide but there are some sunscreens when they are applied on our face they are not visible why because in those sunscreen what do we use we use zinc oxide nanoparticles and that's why that sunscreen becomes transparent that sunscreen becomes transparent fine so here also there is a change in the optical properties next next is carbon carbon generally carbon is not a good conductor of electricity normal size normal sized carbon is not a good conductor it is not a good conductor of electricity right but if we take if we take carbon nanotubes carbon nanotubes these carbon nanotubes are good conductors of electricity they are good conductors of electricity fine so this is a change in the electrical property of nanoparticles right first two examples of gold and zinc oxide are the examples related to optical property this is conductivity of change in conductivity of nanoparticles compared to their normal sized counterparts right similarly similarly normal sized normal sized carbon are not very strong not very strong except diamond right normal sized carbon is not very strong except diamond but carbon nanotubes they are extremely strong they are extremely strong and they are considered as at least 100 times stronger than steel 100 times stronger than steel they are at least 100 times stronger than steel fine so that is what is the change in the properties that we are able to see right so here optical properties are changing color is changing that means optical property is changing at nano scale in the first example of carbon there is change in the conductivity right so conductivity as a property is changing and in the second example strength that means physical property is changing so this clearly shows that nanoparticles have different properties than their normal sized counterparts now the question arises why exactly this happens why exactly this happens let us try to understand why there is change in the properties of nanoparticles why properties change there are number of reasons why properties are changing first 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 reason is that gravitational force does not does not remain important does not remain important at nano scale at nano scale gravitational force does not remain important why gravitational force does not remain important because gravitational force is a function of mass right it is a mass dependent force and that's why this force does not remain relevant at nano scale why does not remain relevant at nano scale because the mass of nano particles is negligible and if mass of nano particles is negligible this gravitational force would also be very negligible and hence it becomes almost irrelevant nano particles if they are present in air they will not fall on ground they will remain suspended in air 
because the gravitational pull that would be attracting them would be very small, would be irrelevant at the nanoscale. Fine. So that is one important reason. But on the other hand, electromagnetic force still remains relevant. Fine. So that is first reason why properties are changing. Second reason. Second reason why properties change. With decrease in size. With decrease in size. With decrease in size, what happens? Surface area to volume ratio increases. Fine. So, with decrease in size, what happens? Surface area to volume ratio increases. And that is why at the nanoscale, at the nanoscale, compared to volume, a surface area would be more and hence if surface area is more then the reactivity of that nanomaterial would also be more. This increases reactivity. This increases reactivity. Right. So, compared to normal size counterparts, nanoparticles of the same material in same conditions would be more reactive fine and as a result of this as a result of more or increased reactivity as a result of increased reactivity we will be able to use nanoparticles as catalysts nanoparticles can be used as catalyst to enhance the rate of any process fine so these are two important reasons why properties change at nanoscale third reason there are some properties that are size dependent properties. Some properties, some properties are, are size dependent, are size, size dependent. There are some properties that are size dependent properties. What are the examples of these size dependent properties? What are the examples of these size dependent properties? Strength. Strength is an example of size dependent property. Right. For example, if I give you a normal size chalk, you will be able to break it very easily. If I give you a normal size chalk, you can break it very easily. But if I give you a very small chalk, it would be difficult for you to break it, right? Why? Because as size falls, strength goes on increasing and that is why nanoparticles have, that is why nanoparticles have very high strength, fine? That is why nanoparticles have very high strength. I hope this point is clear to you, fine? Next and last reason is that at nanoscale, at nanoscale, random molecular motion becomes more important. Random molecular motion, random molecular motion becomes important. Random molecular motion becomes important. Now, just take an example. Let us take an example that uh, there is a stadium. In that stadium, people are there, almost let us say 200 people are there. And what those people are doing? Those people are tossing up a balloon. They are tossing up a balloon. They are one, let us say one person has tossed a balloon. That balloon will again come down and it would be tossed again. So, people, these 200 people in a stadium are continuously tossing this balloon. Fine. Now, you are traveling in a aeroplane. Let us say you are traveling in, a, in an aeroplane and you just saw this particular event going on in the stadium. Now, from that height in the stadium, you might not be able to understand what exactly is going on in that particular stadium. You just are able to see some slow movement of the balloon. Fine. You just are able to see the slow movement of the balloon from aeroplane. But now, in the another scenario, let us say you are present in that particular stadium. 
in the spectators gallery you are there and you are seeing what exactly is happening in that stadium and you are seeing that wildly people are tossing the ball uh, tossing the ball or balloon right in a wild manner people are tossing the uh, ball or balloon right so that you will be able to see from stadium but from aeroplane you just see a slow movement of balloon or ball that is what is the fourth important reason why properties are changing at nano scale at nano scale random motion of molecules become very wild and that wild motion is important from the nano scale particles but from the normal size particles if you see the normal size particle you won't be able to see any kind of that motion but when you observe nano materials nano materials their properties are dependent on this random molecular motion and that's why properties are changing at nano scale fine so these are some of the important reasons because of which nano nano particles exhibit different properties i hope this is clear to you gravitational force does not remain important at the nano scale but electromagnetic force still remains important then with decrease in size there is increase in surface area to volume ratio this also increases the reactivity then some properties are size dependent properties like strength and that's why if size is decreasing strength would increase and lastly random molecular motion becomes important at nano scale fine so these are the properties because of which we are able to see different properties in nano scale particles than their normal sized counterparts i hope this point is clear to you next next is methods of synthesis fine so how exactly we can reach up to nano particles how exactly we can get nano particles there are two methods of it there are two methods of synthesis first is first is top to down approach top to down approach in top to down approach what happens obviously you will be starting with a sized particle like this normal size particle you will take normal size particle you take and you crush it until you reach up to nano particle fine suppose you want nano particles of gold so you will start with normal particle of gold and you will crush it with the help of crushers like ball crushers right you will crush that normal size particle normal size gold with the ball crushers so that that crusher is able to reduce that nan that particle into nano particles of gold that is what is top to down approach fine but here you won't be able to control size Irregu irregular size would be there and secondly it may be the case that suppose you are using ball crushers of of let's say diamond in that case there would be impurities that you will be able to see in nano particles nano particles of gold you want and those gold nano particles you are getting with the help of a ball crusher that is made up of uh, diamond so in that nano particles that you are getting of gold there would be some nano particles of diamond size well. fine so that would be a problem so impurities would be there in this case two problems or two challenges first is that you won't be able to control the shape uniformity of shape you won't be able to ensure and secondly there would be problem with respect to the impurities present in the material and second is bottom up approach bottom up approach so in bottom up approach what we do we start with atoms what we take we take atoms and these at atoms would be synthesized to produce nano particles these atoms would be synthesized to produce nano particles so that is what is bottom up approach where 
atoms we have taken atoms two to three atoms we have taken and we have synthesized them how we can synthesize them we can synthesize them with the help of chemical precipitation with the help of processes like chemical precipitation we will be able to synthesize them and once we synthesize them what we get we get nanoparticles fine so here you will be able to control size and that's why uniformity you will be able to ensure size or shape uniformity you can ensure and secondly uh, there would be no impurities why because there is no third material involved fine so that's what is the methods of synthesis in nature whatever nanoparticles we have those are produced with the help of bottom up approach natural nanoparticles are produced with the help of natural nanoparticles are produced with the help of uh, a bottom up approach and the the industrial nanoparticles industrial nanoparticles are produced with the help of top to down approach right do we have nanoparticles in nature which are natural in origin yes for example volcanic dust consist of natural nanoparticles volcanic dust consist of natural nanoparticles even some viruses have have uh, nano size for example sars cov2 it is it is nano scale virus and that's why we can say that yes naturally also nanoparticles do exist and what are the examples of industrial nanoparticles for example uh, gold nanoparticles which we can be which we can use for various operations graphene is also an industrial nanoparticle carbon nanotubes are also industrial nanoparticles fine so that is what is the methods of synthesis for nanoparticles i hope this is clear to you next next is nano structures different nano structures that right? we will be discussing about different nano structures and you can see first nano structure is graphene first nano structure is graphene and you can see that graphene is a graphene is a 2d structure 2d structure of carbon and it is one of the thinnest material thinnest material known and as it is in the form of sheet this sheet is known as nano sheet this sheet is known as nano sheet as it is in the form of sheet right this graphene has very important properties what are the properties for example it has high strength it has high strength but light weight it has very high strength it is almost 100 times stronger than steel but the weight is still light right its weight is light but strength is not compromised it is higher strength and also second important property is that it is good conductor it is good conductor of heat and electricity heat and electricity it is good conductor of heat and electricity fine and that's why it can be used graphene can be used for the production of electronic devices right generally this graphene it is flexible as well graphene is flexible and that's why it can be used for the production of flexible electronics flexible electronics use graphene for example these days we have flexible phones as well you must have seen Uh, Samsung Z Fold and all. So those electronic, those gadgets are they use graphene. Fine. So that is first important nano structure called as graphene. It is in the form of nano sheets. It is in the form of nano sheets. Fine. So that is one. Next. Second is. Second is carbon nanotubes. or cnts they are abbreviated as cnts carbon nanotubes or cnts fine now let's say you have a sheet of graphene you have a sheet of graphene which we have 
just now discussed and you fold you roll it up so when you roll that graphene sheet what you get is carbon nanotubes so it is a rolled up rolled up graphene graphene nano sheet it is rolled up graphene nano sheet and that's why all the properties that we have discussed in graphene those properties are also seen in carbon nanotubes when you can see the structure so this is a rolled up structure of graphene nano sheets these graphene nano sheets are also very strong yet lightweight they also have very good uh, conductivity as far as heat and electricity are concerned right they are good conductors of heat and electricity and as they are good conductors of of heat especially they are used for heat dissipation what is the application for which they are used they are used for used for heat dissipation heat dissipation that means it would uh, heat used for heat dissipation in electronics in electronics right whenever we use electronic devices over the usage they become hot right for example if you use laptop for a very long period of time it becomes hot now that heat produced by electronic devices reduces their efficiency so what we can do we can use we can use carbon nanotubes so that they will be able to dissipate heat from those electronic devices that heat would be spread out from those electronic devices so that their performance is not compromised that is what is the use of carbon nanotubes in that is what is the use of carbon nanotubes in electronic devices right these days for electronic devices we can use cnt's also because of their strength cnt's can be used in aerospace in aerospace sector we have to have such a material which is lightweight yet strong so that we will be able to increase fuel efficiency of that material fine so uh, of the of the aerospace of the aerospace for example vehicles or satellites fuel efficiency of aerospace vehicles we will be able to use by using a light yet strong material like cnt's carbon nanotubes so these are some of the important uh, usage uh, of cnt's also they have one more property and that is they are highly resistant towards chemical change and corrosion highly resistant towards chemical change chemical change and corrosion fine so that is also one of the properties as a result of which it can be used in number of applications in number of applications these carbon nanotubes can be used fine so that is second structure carbon nanotubes next next is third important structure is fullerenes third important structure is fullerenes so what are fullerenes fullerenes are an allotrope of carbon an allotrope of carbon allotrope of carbon where carbon atoms where carbon atoms are arranged in spherical or tubular form where carbon atoms would be arranged in spherical or tubular form that is what is fullerene an allotrope of carbon and the best example of this best example of fullerene is buckminster fullerene buckminster fullerene fine right. buck in where where 60 carbon atoms in buckminster fullerene 60 carbon atoms are arranged in spherical form they are arranged in spherical form or spherical shape and these 60 carbon atoms 
these 60 carbon atoms would be arranged in 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons. These 60 carbon atoms would be forming 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons and you can see this in pictures, right. So, suppose this is one pentagon and this is one hexagon. So, that way 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons are formed by carbon atoms in Buckminster fullerene. And if you see the shape of Buckminster fullerene resembles with the soccer ball, with the football ball. And that's why these Buckminster fullerenes, they are also known as buckyballs. That's why these Buckminster fullerenes are also known as Bucky balls. Fine. So, these are some of the, this is the important shape of Buckminster fullerene. We have discussed that fullerenes are also, also there in tubular form. So, the tubular example of fullerene is carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes which we have discussed just now have a tubular structure and that is also one of the, uh, one of the uh, way in which fullerenes would be existing. Fine. So, what are the properties of these these fullerenes. Some important properties are there of this fullerene. Let us try to understand those properties. Properties. First is that they have very high mechanical strength. Very high mechanical strength. And as a result of this very high mechanical strength, it is very difficult to crush these fullerenes, right? They are they are uh, resistant towards compression and fractures, and as a result of that, wherever we need high mechanical strength, we can use fullerenes. They have very high mechanical strength, and they are resistant towards compression and fractures, and that's why wherever such kind of application is there, we can use them. Fine. Also, they have high electrical conductivity. They have high, high electrical conductivity. That is also their property. They have high electrical conductivity. Highly electrical conductor they are, and also they are good thermal conductors. Good thermal conductors as well. Fine. So these are the properties that are exhibited by fullerenes. Fine. So that is what are fullerenes. I hope this is clear to you. So this is the third nanostructure that we have in the form of fullerenes. Next. Next is next is quantum dots. Next is quantum dots. So what are quantum dots? These are semiconductor crystals. These are semiconductor crystals and their size ranges from 2 nanometers to 10 nanometers. Their size ranges from 2 nanometers to 10 nanometers and this size of these quantum dots can be used for, for various important optical properties. So, the size of these quantum dots determine their optical properties. So, first is that they have size dependent first property they have size dependent optical property optical properties they have size dependent optical properties for example for example let's say let us consider that you have taken you have taken a quantum dot of 2 nanometer size you have taken quantum dot of 2 nanometer size and you bombarded this quantum dot of 2 nanometer size with white color, with white light instead of saying white color, with white light you bombarded it. Now, this light would be absorbed by this quantum dot and it would be emitted as well. But when it emits that light, that emitted light, that emitted light would be of blue color. What will be emitted? 
blue light would be emitted fine so that is one right a small quantum dot of 2 nanometer size and when you bombard it with a white light the light that is coming out of the quantum dots would be would be blue color would be in blue color right so that is first important first important point now let us consider that now you have taken 10 nanometer quantum dot 10 nanometer quantum dot and you bombard it with you bombard it with let's say white light again you are bombarding white light again and when you bombard when you bombard white light with uh, to this particular 10 nanometer quantum dot it will again emit light and that emitted light would be red color red light would be emitted by this particular quantum dot right so that is what is size dependent optical properties quantum dots have size dependent optical properties as a result of which as a result of which these quantum dots are used to produce vivid colors they are used to produce uh, very high resolution colors in the display where do we use this property we use it in display our tvs these days are able to produce very bright colors that is because of the use of quantum dots in our tvs fine so that is one important property of quantum dots that they have size dependent optical properties and second important property is that they have they are photostable right they are photostable that means they hardly lose their brightness over time second property is that they are photo stable that means they do not lose their brightness over time and that's why this is also the property whose use can be made in displays fine so that is one very important uh, let's say very important nanostructure called as quantum dot fine next now so that is fourth one and one more we will be discussing and that is one more we will be discussing and that is called as dendrimers that is called as dendrimers so next is dendrimers you can see dendrimers so dendrimers have a common center right it may be one atom or it may be more uh, centers more atoms and from that center the uh, dendrons branch out these branched out parts are known as dendrons fine they have one common center and from that it will be branching out there would be number of branches and those branches are called as dendrons and these dendrimers are uh, these dendrimers are biocompatible nanostructures the important property of dendrimers is that they are biocompatible nanostructures and that's why as they are biocompatible nanostructures they can be used in medical sector they can be used in medical sector for different applications fine this is one of the important nano structures which is biocompatible clear i hope nano structures are clear to you we have discussed five different types of nano structures firstly we discuss graphene which is in the form of nano sheet and it has very high strength very high electric and thermal conductivity then when you roll up graphene what you get you get carbon nanotubes so second structure that we discussed was carbon nano carbon nanotubes carbon nanotubes also have high strength high thermal and electrical conductivity thirdly we dis discussed about fullerenes one of the allotropes of carbon fourthly we discussed about carbon dots uh, sorry quantum dots which are in the form of nano uh, crystals semiconductor nano crystals they are and fifthly we discussed about dendrimers i hope this is clear to you next now now moving on to the next point we will discuss about applications now but before that you can check this this uh, app of rouse academy for competitive examination 
and you can scan this QR code in order to install or download this app from, from the Google Play Store. Next now, now we will be discussing about the applications. Applications of nanotechnology in various sectors. Firstly, we will be discussing about applications in health sector. One of the most important applications where nanotechnology is being used right now, though on limited scale, we have started use of nanotechnology in this application and that is called as targeted delivery of drugs. Nanotechnology can be used for targeted delivery of drugs. Let us discuss this application based on an example. In the cancer treatment right now what we use? We use chemotherapy, right? A person suffering from cancer is supposed to undergo a therapy and that therapy is called as chemotherapy, right? Chemotherapy is a non-targeted therapy. That means it would not only target, chemotherapy would not only target cancer cells, it also affects non-cancer cells. Chemotherapy also affects non-cancer cells and that's why often you must have seen those who are taking some treatment with respect to cancer, they often lose their hairs. They often lose their hairs because chemotherapy would target hair follicles which are a type of cells. Fine. So, that is what is the problem with respect to chemotherapy that it is non-targeted, it is delivered to all the cells, cancerous or non-cancerous. Right. So, that is one. Now, instead of ensuring that the, instead of allowing the, uh, the chemotherapy to target cancerous cells, what we can do? Uh, instead of allowing chemotherapy to, uh, to target non-cancerous cells, what we can do? We can use nanotechnology. And using nanotechnology, we will be able to ensure that the drugs are only delivered, only delivered to those cells which are cancerous in nature. Drugs can deliver, can be delivered to only cancerous cells with the help of nanotechnology. And that is what is targeted, that is what is targeted delivery of drugs, right. So, this is targeted delivery of drugs. This is targeted delivery of drugs. Fine, so that is one. What are the benefits? As a result of targeted delivery of drugs, we will be able to reduce side effects of cancer treatment. Side effects of cancer treatment we can reduce, and that is the most important application of uh, the most important application of nanotechnology. Right. Also, the cost of treatment would reduce. Why? Because the drugs that we will need would also reduce in the quantity. Why? Because the drugs are being delivered to the locations where they are needed and then and as a result of that, what will happen? The quantity of drugs that we use would reduce. Right? So, that is what is the first application. Then nanotechnology, nanotechnology can also be used for, uh, for the uh, for taking care of antimicrobial agents. It can be used to kill, it can be used to kill anti, it can be used uh, to kill microbes, kill microbes. And how this is possible? This is possible, for example, with the help of some, some important nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles. These silver nanoparticles, they have antimicrobial properties. They have antimicrobial properties. And as a result of this antimicrobial property of silver nanoparticle, what they will be able to do? They will be able to kill microbes. They will be able to kill microbes. Fine. So, that is also one of the important applications of biotechnology in health sector. Fine. Next. It is also used as biosensors for the production of biosensors. Biosensors can be 
can be developed using using CNTs carbon nanotubes or fullerenes to detect to detect biochemicals associated with certain diseases to detect biochemicals associated with chemicals associated with diseases biochemicals associated with diseases now let us try to understand this particular point so what we can design we can design biosensors what are these biosensors these biosensors would be designed with the help of carbon nanotubes or any other fullerene like buckminster fullerene fine now when we use them when we use them inside our body these biosensors would detect secretion of certain biochemicals secretion of certain biochemicals would be detected by these biosensors now these biochemicals are secreted when the body is suffering from certain disease these biochemicals are related with certain diseases and hence if biosensors are able to detect presence of those biochemicals we will be able to infer that that person's body is suffering from some disease right for example there are some chemicals that are secreted by damaged kidney if kidney is damaged certain chemicals would be secreted those chemicals if are detected by biosensors what we can infer we can infer that that person's kidneys are not behaving normally there are some problems with respect to the functioning of kidney that is what is the use of nano uh, technology in the production of biosensors i hope this is clear to you fine and lastly it can also be used for for gene therapy gene therapy is also a nanotechnology based application right and where exactly we can use gene therapy gene therapy can be used for taking care of genetic diseases in order to treat genetic diseases we use gene therapy and gene therapy is an application of nanotechnology only fine and lastly one more i am writing here nano robots can be developed now this is futuristic application this is not there as of now nano robots can be developed and these nano robots they would be developed in such a way that for example they can be developed to act as antibodies they will develop they will be developed to act as antibodies so that these nano robots would be able to target these nano robots would be able to target those uh, antigens that have entered into body right antigens are foreign materials when these antigens enter into body those antigens lead to diseases and hence we have to produce antibodies to fight against antigens now if someone is not able to produce antigens uh, if someone is not able to produce antibodies to fight those antigens then what then in that case we can use nano robots nano robots would be designed in such a way that they function like antibodies and hence these nano robots would be able to attack antigens and would be able to flush them out from the body these are some of the applications of nanotechnology in health sector this is highly futuristic application this is not at all there as of now but in some way we have already started use of these other applications clear next next is application of biotechnology in agriculture sector application in agriculture sector and the most important application of biotechnology in agriculture sector is nano fertilizers nano fertilizers and these nano fertilizers we have already started use of we are already using nano fertilizers what are the examples examples are nano urea and nano dap nano urea and nano di ammonium phosphate we are already using fine and what is the benefit of use of nano fertilizers 
nano fertilizers are not broadcasted in the agricultural field they are spread on the leaves of trees they are spread on the leaves of crops and as a result of that use efficiency of nano fertilizers is more use efficiency is more secondly the soil pollution we will be able to reduce why because they are not broadcasted they are spread on the leaves also the cost of nano fertilizers in order to carry out let's say fertilization in a particular field is relatively less and hence the input cost for farmers is going to reduce moreover as there is better use efficiency of nano fertilizers the production would also increase these are the benefits of nanotechnology or nano fertilizers in agriculture right so that is one use where we have already developed some important fertilizers like nano urea and nano dap that is di ammonium phosphate next next use or next application in agriculture sector is little futuristic it is futuristic application it is use of nano sensors use of nano sensors now where exactly nano sensors can be used nano sensors can be put they can be put either into the soil or near roots near roots of crops near roots of crops and based on these nano sensors that are that may be there at soil in soil or near roots of crops what we will be getting we will be getting information we will be getting information information about what information about for example it would provide information about soil moisture level soil moisture level and also presence of nutrients presence of nutrients in the soil right so this type of information we can get from the from the nano sensors and based on this information what farmers can do farmers would be able to irrigate their agricultural field at right time right based on this information farmers would be able to irrigate their agricultural field at right time also due to the information with respect to the presence of nutrients they would be able to apply right amount of nutrients in right quantities right right amount of nutrient at right time at right place right only those nutrients will be added which are needed in soil this type of agriculture where we are precisely using inputs is called as precision agriculture precision agriculture or precision farming fine so this is one of the most important applications of nanotechnology in agriculture precision farming where with the minimum amount of inputs we will be trying to maximize the benefit that is called as precision farming fine i hope this is clear to you and this precision especially important because we are living in the era of climate change due to climate change the amount of rainfall that we are getting is getting disturbed right it may be sometime more rainfall sometimes it may be less rainfall so in case of less rainfall precision farming would be of our benefit i hope this is clear to you <clears throat> next now next application is in uh, agriculture only for the production of genetically modified crops we can use nanotechnology for the production of genetically modified crops as well fine so these are some of the applications in which we can use nanotechnology this we have already started using nano fertilizers we have already started using and this term you should remember clear next 
Next application is in electronics sector, in electronic sector. So, in electronic sector what we can use first, first we can use quantum dots, quantum dots. So, quantum dots are being used for, for the production of displays. Right. In displays, we are able to get vibrant colors because of the use of quantum dots. Right. So, that is one application. Secondly, nanotechnology is being used for the production of semiconductor chips. Nanotechnology is being used for the production of semiconductor chips. And these semiconductor chips, what are they? They are brains of modern day devices. They are brains of modern day devices. They are of the fingernail size. They are fingernail size. But on those fingernail size semiconductor chips, we have transistors. And on those, on those fingernail size uh, semiconductor chips, Billions of transistors are there. Billions of transistors are there on those semiconductor chips. And as a result of uh, billions of transistors on those semiconductor chips, the ability of those semiconductor chips to store data and to process data has increased. Our devices, have they become, have they become more efficient? Has their speed increased? Yes, that is because of the use of modern semiconductor chips which have number of transistors on them, fine. So, that is also one of the important applications of nanotechnology in the electronic sector. And one more application is use of graphene, use of graphene where in flexible electronics in flexible electronics fine so in flexible electronics we use graphene nanosheets because these graphene nanosheets have very high electrical conductivity and they are also flexible in nature fine so with the help of nanotechnology our devices are becoming more compact yet they are very fast as well compact so size is small but the ability to process data is very high and that is the result of nanotechnology. Clear? Next. Next application is in, is in energy sector. Where exactly nanotechnology can be used in energy sector? Now, most of the applications here would be futuristic applications. For example, quantum dots. Quantum dots, quantum dots can be used in the production of more efficient solar panels for more efficient solar panels. Solar panels would be more efficient of quantum dots and as a result of that they would be able to produce these more efficient solar panels would be able to produce more solar energy. They would be able to produce more solar energy. That is one. Use of quantum dots in the solar panels. This is futuristic. This is futuristic. Then carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes, CNTs can be used in the blades of windmills blades of in the blades in the blades of wind mills so if if uh, carbon nanotubes are used in the blades of wind mills what will happen we have discussed that carbon nanotubes are strong yet lightweight so the weight of light the weight of 
weight of these blends would reduce their weight would reduce and hence if the weight of blades is reducing that means even if there is less availability of wind speed if the wind speed is lesser even in that case these blades which are using carbon nanotubes and have very small weight would be able to produce wind energy they would be able to produce wind energy fine so that is what is carbon nanotubes clear next now now uh, one more example one more application of uh, these uh, these cnds is that cnds application of carbon nanotubes carbon nanotubes can be used in power transmission lines power transmission lines right carbon nanotubes can be used in power transmission lines what are power transmission lines power transmission lines are those cables that take that carry power from the generation center to the areas where it is being used right power is generated at one place and it would be consumed at different place so from that place where power is generated power is carried with the help of some cables towards areas where power would be used those cables are called as power transmission lines in india tnd losses that is transmission and distribution losses are close to 30% so if we want to reduce this power transmission loss we can use carbon nanotubes in these power transmission lines so that the electrical conductivity we will be able to increase because we know that the electrical conductivity of carbon nanotubes is more and hence they would be able to take power from one area to another area with minimum losses that is what is the use of carbon nanotubes in power transmission lines and then it can also be used another use of nanotechnology is in the production of batteries in the production of batteries also we can use nanotechnology for example there are some organizations like general motors that are trying to replace the liquid electrolyte present in the batteries with the help of solid electrolyte right liquid electrolyte is being used in our batteries these days but that liquid electrolyte gets overheated and it may lead to catching a fire you must have came, came across number of instances where electric vehicles are catching fire that is because of overheating of the of the liquid electrolyte but instead of use of liquid electrolyte if we start use of solid electrolyte then we will be able to reduce the instances of uh, overheating but the problem is that in these solid electrolytes we will have to ensure that there is flow of uh, electric current or electric charge properly there has to be a good flow of electric charge and in order to ensure that there is good flow of the of the electric charge even in the solid electrolyte what we are using in that solid electrolyte we are using carbon nanotubes or other nano materials which have poor electrical conductivity so that even with the help of use of solid electrolyte there is no compromise on the electricity that would be produced by that solid electrolyte so if this experiment becomes successful in batteries in future instead of liquid electrolyte we will be having solid electrolyte so these are some of the applications in which in which nanotechnology can be used for the production of energy i hope these points are clear to you <laughs> fine so that is about energy sector applications of nanotechnology next and last applications are miscellaneous applications miscellaneous applications so first miscellaneous application is in water purification in water purification we can use nano filters we can use nano filters so uh, with the help of nano filters these nano filters will be having very small pores 
and through those pores only water molecule would be able to flow not any sediment nor bacteria fine and those will be able to ensure that water is getting purified from those sediments as well as bacteria present in water but in case of in case there is virus present in the water that virus might not be filtered by these nanofilters fine uh, and this is especially important for countries like india because in india we use reverse osmosis uh, equipments ro equipments we use for the purification of water but ro equipments they consume more water to produce 2 liters of water these ro equipments waste 8 liters of water and that we cannot afford in a country like india and hence instead of using ro equipment what we can use nanofilters that is one second in the production of fabric that is wrinkle free stain resistant fine so in order to produce wrinkle free and stain resistant fabric we are using nanotechnology and this use is already there you must have seen shark tank in shark tank there was one uh, there was one person who came to pitch for his product uh, and that product was a t-shirt was a shirt and on that shirt he demonstrated he poured some coffee but that coffee could not uh, could not stick to the cloth it it flew uh, down and that's why such stain resistant clothes can be developed with the help of nanotechnology right so that is also one of the important applications another application is in cosmetics that we have already referred to in cosmetics also we are we can use nanotechnology where in cosmetics we are using it in sunscreen sunscreen that is being used it consists of zinc oxide sunscreen that is being used it consists of zinc oxide fine so that is also one of the important use of nanotechnology one more important use is in oil spill clearance oil spill clearance now what exactly is oil spill oil spill is an event that occurs where oil spill over water right it generally occurs in the seas and oceans where it may be the case that one ship carrying oil would collapse with another ship and as a result of that accident all the oil carrying carried by this particular ship would be would spill on the ocean surface and this is very harmful why it is harmful because ocean surface will not be able to receive any kind of sunlight and as a result of that the activity of photosynthesis would be compromised also oxygen dissolution from air will also be compromised and hence in the ocean there would be lack of availability of enough oxygen and that's why we have to address this particular oil spill event and to address this oil what we can use we can use magnetic water repellent nanoparticles magnetic water repellent nanoparticles can be used in order to clear this oil spill right so as these nanoparticles as these nanoparticles are water repellent they will not attach themselves to water molecules they will attach themselves to oil as they attach themselves to oil they would become a part of oil that means they will make sure that oil is uh, is attached to themselves once they attach themselves to oil what we can do we can we can use magnet these nanoparticles are magnetic in nature and hence we can use magnet in order to pull those magnetic nanoparticles and when we pull those magnetic nanoparticles we are also able to pull oil that is attached to those nanoparticles and that is what is the use of nanotechnology for taking care of oil spill events which are extremely harmful for the environment which are extremely harmful for the environment fine so these are some of the 
miscellaneous applications of nanotechnology. I hope this is clear to you. Next. Next is threats. Threats posed due to use of nanotechnology. Now, nanotechnology, we know that its most important advantage is its size because due to size, it is able to exhibit different properties. But the size is also a threat. What is the problem? Due to small size, due to small size of nanoparticles, what will happen? They will become nano waste. They will form nano waste, right? Once we use nanoparticles on a large scale, it would be very difficult for us to collect them back. Why? Because of their small size. And that's why they would remain suspended in the environment. And as they remain suspended in the environment, they become a part of nano waste. And this is a threat. Why? Nano waste is a threat. Why? Because nanoparticles pose pose health hazards. They pose health hazards. What kind of health hazards? Firstly, when we, let us say nano waste is present in the air, when we inhale it, it would firstly settle down in our lungs and thereby it would affect our lungs, right? The functioning of lungs would be affected by the use of, by the inhalation of nanoparticles, right? And this, uh, in this particular case, the most important threat is of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes have similar structure to that of asbestos. Asbestos is a material that would, that leads to various respiratory problems. It affects our lungs, right? So, uh, it poses health hazards because these nanoparticles would get deposited in our lungs leading to various lung related issues. Also, they can enter in our blood stream. They can enter in our blood stream as well and that is why nanoparticles or nano waste is a threat. Next, silver nanoparticles we discussed that. Silver nanoparticles are antimicrobial in nature. They are antimicrobial in nature. But this antimicrobial property, it would affect, it would affect harmful microbes. This antimicrobial property would affect harmful microbes. And at the same time, this antimicrobial property of silver nanoparticles would also harm beneficial microbes. Beneficial microbes would also be killed. And this is a threat of silver nanoparticles. Right. Next, nanoparticles, we discussed that nanotechnology can be used for the production of electronics. Right. It may also be the case that it is used for the production of nano cameras. It can be used for the production of nano cameras and these nano cameras can be a threat to privacy of an individual, threat to privacy, fine, so that is also a threat. Similarly, it can be used for the production of nano weapons, it can be used for the production of nano weapons as well, right. One more and last, one more and last threat is ecophagy. Ecophagy. Now, what do we mean by ecophagy? Ecophagy is a hypothetical situation, right? Right now, uh, means we we might not have this particular situation. It is just a hypothetical situation. So, what is ecophagy? It may be the case that robots, nano robots that we develop with the help of nanotechnology, will destroy the environmental components. Right? These nano robots keep on destroying the environmental components. As a result of that, 
there would be destruction of environment and that kind of hypothetical situation where nano robots carry out destruction of environment is referred as eco fine right? what is eco a hypothetical situation where nano robots carry out destruction of environmental components that is called as eco fine fine so these are some of the threats that nanotechnology poses also one more point that you can highlight in the threats is that we discussed that nanotechnology is used for gene therapy so if nanotechnology is used for gene therapy and if it is used only by certain section of the society it would lead to creation of superhumans those superhumans will have more uh, more let's say advantageous genes than others which are naturally getting their genes and that would lead to creation of a section of the society that can be categorized as superhumans fine so that is also a hypothetical situation but it is possible so these are the threats that are being posed by nano technology i hope this is clear to you if you want to take a screenshot you can take so that is about our discussion of nano technology before we end our session you can just check the mppsc prelims examination 2025 the series you can scan this qr code in order to get more information also uh, this is the schedule that would be followed for mppsc prelims test series these are some other initiatives of rao's academy for competitive examination uh, you can even check app of rao's academy for competitive examination it is available on play store you can scan this qr code in order to get app uh, in order to download the app fine so that is about our discussion of nanotechnology and you can connect with these uh, social media channels of rao's academy for competitive examination thank you